Modi begins big corruption counter strike. मेरे खिलाफ साजी से रचेंगे, लेकिन मुझे पता नहीं है जो डर जाए वो Modi नहीं हो सकता. Share stage with Congress Chief Minister, then bashes him. कुशासन और भ्रष्टाचार के दाग को कांग्रेस अब झूठी गारंटियों से छिपाने की कोशिश कर रही आफ्टर कर्नाटका लॉस ऑन करप्शन प्लैंक बीजेपी मिशन टू बैश ऑपोजिशन ऑन ग्राफ्ट आइए करतल ध्वनि से पुनः अभिवादन करें मिशन ऑपोजिशन करप्शन रिवीक Good to have you back here on Five Live with me, Shiv Arur. Thanks as always for joining me. Prime Minister Modi is in his Karn Bhumi of Varanasi. It's his Lok Sabha constituency as well. Ten months to go for the big 2024 election, but what a day it has been! Very significant because the Prime Minister has just signalled. We think. that the road to 2024 is going to be fought on a big anti corruption plank which is precisely what the opposition has been using to beat the bjp up with in the last few months that's the big story we're tracking here we'll take you across to varanasi as soon as the prime minister reaches there as well let's get you straight to the top stories no relief for rahul gandhi remains disqualified as member of parliament gujarat high court calls conviction just and legal says refusing stay on conviction won't result in injustice congress tries foul over gujarat high court verdict on rahul gandhi says will move supreme court next bjp calls rahul a habitual offender in defamation bjp gets battle ready for assembly elections this year new state chiefs appointed for four state elections pralad joshi given charge of rajasthan prakash javdekar for telangana court takes cognizance of sexual harassment case against wrestling federation chief bridge bhushan singh summons wfi boss on the 18th of this month after the launch of twitter alternative threads app by instagram elon musk threatens to sue meta and mark zuckerberg over unlawful misappropriation of twitter's trade secrets and ip It's the Modi government's big mega corruption counter strike that we are witnessing playing out in the political battlefield of the country. The Prime Minister was in Congress ruled Chhattisgarh earlier today. He is now in Uttar Pradesh. His ministers, his team has launched what is looking very much like an organized anti-corruption counter strike against the opposition that's trying to unite against him. after the karnataka debacle for the bjp on partially the corruption plank remember that's where the 40% sarkara campaign was fought against the bjp now the bjp it seems has mounted a big anti corruption backhand directed at the opposition the bjp's corrupt opposition or chore opposition campaign appears to have begun in earnest like i said just a few hours ago the prime minister was in chatisgarh a congress ruled state that goes to the elections this year just hours after the prime minister shared a stage with congress chief minister of chatisgarh bhupesh baghel he was on another stage where he pointed a finger directly at the sitting chief minister from the congress party calling him corrupt take a look this is a big declaration of war on the issue of anti corruption this time by the bjp against the opposition जो डर जाए वो मोदी नहीं हो सकता प्राइम मिनिस्टर नरेंद्र मोदी फायरिंग फ्रेश सैल्वोज ऑफ द कांग्रेस इन छत्तीसगढ़ ऑन फ्राइडे एज ही साउंडेड द पोल ब्यूगल इन द स्टेट जो डर जाए वो मोदी नहीं हो सकता 
कि छत्तीसगढ़ के विकास के सामने एक बहुत बड़ा पंजा दीवार बन के खड़ा हो गया है ये कांग्रेस का पंजा है ये पंजा आपसे आपका हक छीन रहा है Modi claimed the Congress was offering freebie guarantees to voters to cover up corruption under Chief Minister Bhupesh Baghel's rule. Kushasan aur bhrashtachar ke daag ko Congress ab jhoothi guarantees se chhipane ki koshish kar rahi hai. Aapko aisi jhoothi guarantees se बहुत सतर्क और सावधान रहने की जरूरत है कॉलिंग करप्शन द कांग्रेस इज बिगेस्ट आइडियोलॉजी प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी वाउड टू रूट आउट ट्राइबरी मोदी को डिगा पाएंगे देश के हर भ्रष्टाचारी को एक बात कान खोलकर सुन लेनी चाहिए वो वो अगर भ्रष्टाचार की गारंटी है तो मोदी भ्रष्टाचार पर कार्रवाई की गारंटी है लॉन्चिंग एन ऑल आउट अटैक ऑन द रूलिंग कांग्रेस पार्टी इन द स्टेट द प्राइम मिनिस्टर क्लेम छत्तीसगढ़ हैड बिकम अ माफिया लैंड कोल माफिया सैंड माफिया लैंड माफिया न जाने कैसे कैसे माफिया यहां फल फूल रहे हैं दिस इज प्राइम मिनिस्टर मोदी फर्स्ट विजिट टू द कांग्रेस रूल स्टेट आफ्टर बींग इलेक्टेड एज प्राइम मिनिस्टर फॉर अ सेकेंड टर्म इन ट्वेंटी नाइनटीन द बीजेपी इज बैंकिंग ऑन मोदीज पॉप्युलैरिटी टू टॉपल बघेल इन छत्तीसगढ़ ब्यूरो रिपोर्ट इंडिया टूडे Not surprising at all that the Chhattisgarh government has fired right back at the chief minister it's erupted into a big war of words now Chhattisgarh's newly named deputy chief minister TS Singh Deo has responded to the prime minister says the defamation case against Rahul Gandhi proves that it is in fact the BJP that is scared listen in ne galat kiya hai wo bachega nahi और ये कहने की हिम्मत मैं इसलिए कर रहा हूं क्योंकि मेरे पास जो कुछ भी है वो आपका दिया हुआ है वो देश का दिया हुआ है ये लोग मेरे पीछे पड़ेंगे मेरी कब्र खोदने की धमकी दे देंगे मेरे खिलाफ साजिश से रचेंगे लेकिन उन्हें पता नहीं है जो डर जाए वो मोदी नहीं हो सकता साथियों कांग्रेस जितनी चाल चल ले लेकिन छत्तीसगढ़ के लोगों को आगे ले जाने के संकल्प से मोदी पीछे नहीं हटेगा कांग्रेस करप्शन बात जोड़ने का प्रश्न ही नहीं उठता कांग्रेस तो एक संस्था है संस्था करप्ट कैसे हो सकती है करप्ट होगा तो कोई व्यक्ति होगा और मोदी जी ने जिन बातों को कहा उसके पहले छत्तीसगढ़ में जो पीडीएस का स्कैम हुआ था छत्तीसगढ़ में छत्तीस हजार करोड़ का पीडीएस का स्कैम हुआ था तीन करोड़ बासठ लाख रूपये नगद कार्यालयों से बरामद हुए थे उसकी जांच क्यों नहीं कराई तो ये एक तरफा कार्रवाई करने का प्रयास दबाव बनाने का प्रयास अनैतिक प्रयास ठीक है हम लोग अपने रास्ते पे जनहित के काम में लगे रहेंगे बढ़ते रहेंगे आगे Now make no mistake the prime minister's clean image has been a big factor in the BJP's electoral wins but ironically it was an anti-corruption issue combined with extravagant freebies 
that allowed the Congress to vanquish the BJP most recently in Karnataka. Well, with the war for 2024 truly on, it is clear that the Prime Minister and the BJP will be playing big by painting the opposition as completely corrupt and united by corruption. Remember, the Prime Minister's first attack on the united opposition soon after the mega Gutbandan meet in Patna was that it was a group of corrupt people who were coming together against his government's anti-corruption impulses. had taken to a stage just days after the big Patna meet between all the opposition parties to take each one of them by name, including most recently the NCP, to brand them as corrupt. He didn't take specific names, but he did name the parties. And that appears to have been the beginning of a new corrupt opposition mission by the BJP. So across states, we've shown you what the Prime Minister said today in Chhattisgarh, but it's happening across states, and that's the reason why we believe this is an organized counterattack. The BJP is fighting on the front foot on the issue of corruption after losing on the 40% Sarkara charge in Karnataka just weeks ago. This was a tweet put out by the BJP in Karnataka just yesterday, suggesting that Yatindra, the son of Chief Minister Sidramaya, is the real shadow chief minister and a thread of corruption runs right through the new Karnataka Sarkara. That theme is continuing by the BJP in Karnataka now as well. Just weeks ago, 40% Sarkara was the weapon used to beat the BJP and the Bombay government out of office and now the tables are being turned by the BJP. Next, the Mahapavar quake that has been built around the corruption theme as well. Remember, just a couple of weeks after the Prime Minister had labelled the NCP as corrupt, a big split took place in the NCP with the Ajit Pavar faction, which, mind you, the BJP had also named corrupt very specifically, has joined the BJP and the government now in Maharashtra. Once again there, corruption, the running and central theme to what's going on. ये दल गारंटी है भ्रष्टाचार की अगर मैं एनसीपी की बात करूं तो एनसीपी पर भी करीब करीब सत्तर हजार करोड़ रुपए के घोटालों का आरोप है इनकी लिस्ट भी बहुत लंबी है इन पार्टियों के घोटालों का मीटर नैशनलिस्ट कांग्रेस पार्टी एनसीपी काय मनाचे नैचरली करप्ट पार्टी मजा आज आरोप है भारतीय जनता पक्षा या देशा मधे सगत करप्ट पार्टी कुछ ली Well, the NCP is the most memorable anti-corruption attack right now because they're in the news because of the big Maharashtra quake, the big implosion of the NCP there. But remember, the BJP over the last few weeks has been singling out specifically each and every major opposition party. If it was the NCP, it was also the Trinamool that was singled out. Here's how another Modi minister very recently had targeted the Trinamool under Mamta Banerjee, again on the issue of corruption. There's a pattern here. Mamta Banerjee ji ke raj mein chit fund ghotala ho, koila ghotala ho, ya phir cut money ho, aur ab jis tarah se shakshikon ka ghotala hua, aur 21 crore rupya, ek sa yogi ke gharpe mila, to aap kalpana kijiye kitna bada ghotala hoga, ममता बनर्जी जी भ्रष्टाचार के रिकॉर्ड तोड़ रहे हैं ममता बनर्जी और अरविंद केजरीवाल जी में होड़ लगी है कि कौन ज्यादा करप्शन करता है केजरीवाल जी ने डिपार्टमेंट कोई नहीं रखा लेकिन बाकी मंत्रियों को डिपार्टमेंट देकर पूरी खुली छूट दे रखी है लूट करने की ऑल्सो द डीएमके ऑल्सो केसीआर ऑल्सो द बी 
also every other opposition party you can think of, whether it is the left, whether it is the Congress party, whether it is the BRS, the Trinamool, DMK, they are all in the purview of the Prime Minister's new anti-corruption counter-strike. Here's a meeting between the Prime Minister and KCR not very long ago, but now with Telangana on the horizon for elections, the BRS and KCR are also a justifiable target for the BJP on the issue of corruption. Now let me take you through how the Prime Minister, Team Modi, the BJP are specifically naming and shaming the opposition on specific corruption issues. Rahul Gandhi, the enforcement rhetoric is probing the National Herald case. Akhilesh Yadav of the Samajwadi Party accused in illegal sand mining case. That's something the BJP is going to town with. Tejasvi Yadav in Bihar under the CBI lens in Benami Properties cases. Supriya Sule of the NCP accused in the Lavasa land scam. BJP making a big deal out of that. K. Kavita, the BRS uh, chief and chief minister of Telangana's daughter named in the infamous Delhi Liquor Gate case. So there's not a single major opposition party on the road to 24 that is not being hit with the corruption bat and it's all part of an organized attack by the BJP. Take a look at some of the recent corruption attacks on the BJP as well. Remember, this is a two-way street and the BJP having been battered on the issue of corruption for many, many weeks and months now has decided to take the same issue, flip it over and hand it back to the opposition. The 40% Sarkara campaign, the PCM campaign in Karnataka, the most visible recent example of an anti-corruption political issue being made during an election. The campaign claiming a scam in the Adani group and linkages with the Modi government, that's been a running theme that the Congress especially has been taking up. Then most recently was, there was the campaign against India's uh, uh, looming deal for predator drones from the United States. It's a campaign that sank without a trace, shoot and scoot politics by the Congress party, but again it gives you a sense of how corruption is the flavor of the season on both camps, both the government camp and the opposition camp, who is more credible, who is in a better position to be a credible anti-corruption mascot, perhaps will be one of the big things going into this big election season. Modi will be reaching Baranasi, his Lok Sabha constituency, very, very shortly to announce a series of projects in that, in that, uh, uh, in that holy city. Uh, we'll be cutting across to that live, but just before the Prime Minister uh, 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 is on his way to Varanasi, he was in Gorakhpur. Remember, that's the city of Chief Minister Yogi Adityanath. Uh, he will be heading to Varanasi in a short while. He attended the closing ceremony of the Gita Press Centenary celebrations weeks after his government conferred the Gandhi Peace Prize for the year 2021 on the publisher. The decision triggered, remember, a political controversy back then with the Congress calling the move a travesty and comparing it with awarding Hindutva ideologue Veer Savarkar and Gandhi's killer Nathuram Godse. The controversy aside, the Gita Press is one of the world's largest publishers, having published 417 million books in 14 languages, include 162 million copies of the Srimad Bhagavad Gita. In Gorakhpur, the Prime Minister will also flag off the Gorakhpur Lucknow Vande Bharat Express. This is something he did earlier. In his constituency of Varanasi, the Prime Minister will inaugurate and lay the foundation of projects worth more than 12,000 crore rupees, including the Pandit Deendayal Upadhyay Junction, Sonnagar railway line of the dedicated freight corridor. Hamari Sarkar ne Gita Press ko Gandhi Shanti Puraskar bhi diya hai. Gandhi ji ka Gita Press se bhavanat mag judao tha. Ek samay mein Gandhi ji kalyan patrika ke madhyam se Gita Press ke liye likha karte the. Aur mujhe bataya gaya कि गांधी जी ने सुझाव दिया था कि कल्याण पत्रिका में विज्ञापन न छापे जाएं कल्याण पत्रिका आज भी गांधी जी के उस सुझाव का सत प्रतिशत अनुसरण कर रही है मुझे खुशी है कि आज ये पुरस्कार गीता प्रेस को मिला है ये देश की ओर से गीता प्रेस का सम्मान है 
इसके योगदान का सम्मान है और इसकी सौ वर्षों की विरासत का सम्मान है साथियों गीता प्रेस विश्व का ऐसा इकलौता प्रिंटिंग प्रेस है जो सिर्फ एक संस्था नहीं है बल्कि एक जीवंत आस्था है गीता प्रेस का कार्यालय करोड़ों करोड़ लोगों के लिए किसी से किसी भी मंदिर से जरा भी कम नहीं है इसके नाम में भी गीता है और इसके काम में भी गीता है और जहां गीता है वहां साक्षात कृष्ण है और जहां कृष्ण है वहां करुणा भी है कर्म भी है वहां ज्ञान का बोध भी है और विज्ञान का शोध भी है क्योंकि गीता का वाक्य है वासुदेव सर्वम वासुदेव सर्वम सब कुछ वासुदेव में है सब कुछ वासुदेव से ही है सब कुछ वासुदेव में ही है मैंने लाल किले से कहा था और आपको याद होगा मैंने लाल किले से कहा था कि ये समय गुलामी की मानसिकता से मुक्त होकर अपनी विरासत पर गर्व करने का समय है और इसलिए शुरुआत में भी मैंने कहा आज देश विकास और विरासत दोनों को साथ लेकर चल रहा है आज एक और भारत डिजिटल टेक्नोलॉजी में नए रिकॉर्ड बना रहा है तो साथ ही सदियों बाद काशी में विश्वनाथ धाम का दिव्य स्वरूप भी देश के सामने प्रकट हुआ है आज हम वर्ल्ड क्लास इंफ्रास्ट्रक्चर बना रहे हैं तो साथ ही केदारनाथ और महाकाल महालोक जैसे तीर्थों की भव्यता के साक्षी भी बन रहे हैं सदियों बाद अयोध्या में भव्य राम मंदिर का सपना हमारा सपना पूरा होने जा रहा है a social media war for the ages that has erupted and taken the world by storm of course you know that we're talking about the big war between musk and zuck and it's getting bigger with each passing minute after challenging each other to a cage fight a few weeks ago the tussle has now exploded into a courtroom the beef this time is over meta's new social media app called threads which is basically a twitter clone well elon musk who you remember forked out 44 billion dollars to buy twitter is accusing zuckerberg of using twitter's trade secrets to take on twitter and launching an app very much like it called threads well basically elon musk has signaled to zuckerberg i'll see you in court take a look at the story from a cage fight to a court fight days after the launch of twitter rival threads elon musk is taking his fight against mark zuckerberg to a whole new level the twitter boss has now threatened legal action against zuckerberg for meta's latest creation threads the threads platform developed by meta bears a suspicious resemblance to elon musk's twitter allowing users to share their thoughts with a public audience in a simple text format. Now the idea is there's an amazing community on Instagram and wonderful creators. We want to create a space where they can engage in public conversations that is friendly and that is open. And so we're going to bring a lot of the good tools from Instagram to Threads. Things like hidden words and restrict, which allow you to shape the experience into something a little bit more friendly. Things like our community guidelines and over time more features around recommendations and trends. In just 2 days of its launch on Wednesday, Threads has already gained 30 million signups and counting, taking advantage of Instagram's billions of users to grow at this record-breaking rate. Yes, 
And while Musk all along acted totally cool about Zuckerberg's threads, he's now said enough is enough. The reason for suing threads? In a letter from Twitter's lawyer to Zuckerberg, Meta is being accused of having access to Twitter's trade secrets and other highly confidential information. Musk was quick to take to Twitter to respond to the situation, saying that competition is fine, cheating is not. Despite accusations that Meta cheated by hiring former Twitter employees and learning the tricks of Twitter's trade, a former senior employee of Twitter said that they were not aware of any former staffers working on threads or any senior people working in Meta at all. Could Elon Musk just be grasping at threads? What evidence does Musk have of these lofty accusations? In court, a little birdie may not cut it. All of this remains to be seen once the tech titans take it to the courtroom. Could Elon Musk be grasping at threads? What evidence does Musk have for these lofty accusations? A little birdie may not cut it in court. All this remains to be seen when the tech titans take it to the courtroom. This is Anya Niharika Shuts for India Today. Okay, so now let's just break down for you, uh, you know, how quickly Threads has become one of the most, most used apps, just in terms of a simple metric. How long it has taken for, uh, for Threads to acquire one million users. Now, obviously, it's difficult to compare because uh, Threads obviously enjoys the ecosystem and publicity that all these platforms actually uh, give it. But it has taken barely one hour, one hour for Threads to acquire over a million subscribers, accounts, one million users. It took five days for ChatGPT to acquire one million users. It took 76 days for Instagram to do the same thing. Spotify took 152 days. Facebook took nearly a year. Twitter took like practically two years to achieve that same kind of scale. And you can see those numbers there for Netflix. Just a fun little comparison of how rapidly viral Threads has gone and how it has been able to acquire a million users very, very quickly. Let me get in our resident experts in on this big fight. Banas Tiwari is senior assistant editor with India Today. In Ayush Elavadi is technology editor with Business Today Television. Welcome, guys. Uh, uh, Ayush, to you first. Uh, you know, right off the bat, Elon Musk suing, uh, you know, suing uh, Threads and Meta, claiming that uh, uh, you know uh, intellectual properties have been stolen, trade secrets have been stolen. Uh, you know, we're all waiting for that cage match. We hadn't accounted for the fact that there probably will be a courtroom fight as well. Shiv, Elon and Mark are at it again. And these two have been at each other's throats for the longest time. I can remember reporting on this back in 2016, 2017. It was verbal spats then and an exchange on social media talking about the future of AI. One said yeah. AI would be a doomsday-like scenario. The other one said it's going to be perfectly smooth sailing. Then we know all about them challenging each other to a cage match. And this happens, of course, only with US and, and the entertainment that comes out uh, from some of these narratives. And then now we have a lawsuit. I don't know how much of this goes into, well, publicity for the big mixed martial arts sort of cage match. But yes, this is a, a serious accusation ship. Mm. That said, about it being a copycat platform, when you get into the, the bare technicalities of what they're planning to do with threads and what they've managed to do with that timeline that you just alluded to, well, then it is a very different path for threads. Right now, at this point, without ads and monetization and the verification, mm. the paid verification that we're also used to, it looks like a very bare copycat original version of Twitter. The reason, of course, yeah. that the timelines you pointed out to, one hour for them to get to one million, Chad GBD took much longer, Instagram took 75 days, and of course it went on. It is one, the Gen Z factor with the way mm. that they're latching on to it. Two, it's a captive audience that Adam yeah. Mosseri yeah. and Mark Zuckerberg are working with. You, you're on Instagram, you've got to go straight onto threads because you've, you're, you've, you've uh, really uh, worked with the buzz out there. And also, there is a lot of clarifications needed from the Threads and Instagram team because as of now, if you delete your Threads app, which you've automatically onboarded onto, well, then you'll also lose your Instagram account because there's so many correlations with verification working on both of them, 
So there's a lot of stuff happening over there. But yeah, coming yeah. to the point about the law to Shiv, Andy Stone, that's uh, Meta's communications director, actually did respond to these claims today and said that Thread's engineering team does not even have one former Twitter employee. Oh, so right. uh, it remains mm. to be seen. It, it remains to be seen whether there's actually a theft of intellectual property. And mm -hmm. I'm just not quite sure whether this is a little bit of a smoke screen before the big cage match that happens very shortly. In interestingly, and we're all waiting for that cage match, uh, you know, courtroom drama, I'm sure we'll all welcome as well. It's always good for, you know, for users and customers when the big companies go at each other because it makes everything uh, less expensive as well, I imagine, theoretically. But Manas, you know, the numbers are impressive. You know, 30 million plus subscribers in a matter of a day, 1 million subscribers in an hour. You know, very, very understandable. Meta has a huge ecosystem. Uh, you know, anyone using Instagram is been bombed by you know prompts to go and join threads so it's not surprising these numbers are hardly uh, you know uh, uh, you know hardly uh, something to be uh, you know surprised by but uh, one is wondering whether threads can actually kill twitter twitter is big it's a legacy you know a legacy social media platform the idea of course is to take as many people away from twitter uh, uh, you know what are you hearing how do you see this playing out So saying that a platform like Threads can actually go on and kill Twitter would be would not be fair because it's still relatively new. What we have to understand is that Twitter has been around for a while. What yeah. works for Threads is though the timing at which it has been launched. There have been attempts in the past, of course, there's been a Mastodon, Blue Sky, uh, other platforms have tried to you know give you an alternative for Twitter, but this mm. time. The, first of all, the timing, because over the last one year, what we have seen, there's a lot of controversies going around Twitter. Every other morning you get up, you get to hear some new feature, which people are not really happy with. Over the weekend also, we saw there was this new reader's limit that was imposed by Twitter. And a lot of these people have come out and, you know, vocally said that they're not very happy with how the platform is uh, sort of working. And they've been looking for an alternative. And at the right time, probably Mark Zuckerberg has come up with this Threads app. Mm. And... Uh, Another thing that we have to understand is that unlike some of the other platforms like a Mastodon or a Blue Sky, what uh, works for Threads is that it has already has a very huge user base uh, yeah, of yeah. Instagram and even Meta. And what uh, one thing which they have done very smartly is that when you uh, log into Threads, what you can do is you can follow all your Instagram followers at once, which you know give you a ready-made uh, user base when you start using the Fresh app. And it has sort of helped Threads acquire that sort of uh, user base and of course it has the backing of meta it has both the financial backing the technical backing they have the sort of engineers the engineering team which you know it is required to mm. run a platform like this so yes initial days definitely look promising we finally have one app which can you know generally go neck and neck with twitter give it a tough competition yeah. but i would still be apprehensive to you know believe that it can actually go on and kill Twitter because in the past we have seen so many of these social media platforms which have come. Uh, Clubhouse is an example which just came and sort of disappeared. Nobody talks yeah. about it now. TikTok was another example. I mean, it had different issues that was banned in certain, certain countries and all. But even then, we have seen so many different social media platforms create some sort of a buzz and then true, uh, true. you know yeah. they are not able to sustain that. So only time will tell. But yes, the initial signs are promising. The the biggest uh, thing which I said is that this has it has the backing of Mark Zuckerberg and Meta. Yeah, you know, in terms of in terms of resources, in terms of money, I mean, there's no shortage of it. You know, unlike unlike Twitter, which has actually been bleeding for a very long time, uh, you, uh, you know, uh, Threads and Instagram uh, have no shortage. It's sitting on an enormous pile of cash. Uh, Ayush, uh, you know, people who use Twitter have been sort of dismayed by the, uh, you know, the Elon Musk brand of unpredictability that has come into the system. You know, uh, new yeah. rules every day, new yeah. things changing every day, uh, people wondering, you know, what's going to happen tomorrow, you can't read as many tweets as you wanted to, uh, uh, you know, paid, subs uh, per paid blue ticks, you know, many things have been changing and it's, there's almost a whimsical quality that's, uh, you know, uh, come into Twitter. Uh, plus, you've got the Malik of Twitter on Twitter, you know, constantly saying stuff. In the early Twitter, Jack Dorsey was like an invisible figure. He'd tweet once in a while. Nobody really knew who yeah. he was. Here, the lead actor is Elon Musk, and he's always there. And he's proven to be a, an unpredictable character. You know, very much in the in the in the kind of shape of a Donald Trump, perhaps. But one is wondering whether all of this may actually drive people away from Twitter. Uh, you know, towards uh, towards uh, something like a Threads, and maybe. Zuckerberg and his team at Facebook and Meta have been watching these things taking place on Twitter and, uh, uh, you know, uh, put the, uh, you know, learned those lessons and put them into this new platform. Absolutely, Shiv. And, and honestly, 
as a power user of Twitter. Look, you're quite a rock star out there. I, I implore you to use the Threads app and tell me what you think. I have. Personally, I've signed as up. Someone who's <laughs> I'm glad, <laughs> and I'm sure you'll be you'll be you'll be trending shortly with all the cool things that you do post. But it's interesting over there that you pointed out that. All these antics of Elon Musk, since we've been tracking it on your or the eventual demise of Twitter, it's it's actually a, it's a point worth noting. What what I really understand from how Threads is is coming about, Adam Mosseri, who's who's running the shop out there, has also come out and said it's a risky endeavor, and you really shouldn't underestimate both Twitter and Elon. Look, there's a mm. vibrant community uh, out there for Twitter, but yeah. one thing they did get wrong was monetization. The truth of the matter is. The tides of our times tell us that there are revenue pressures operating in the content world, across the media, and across businesses, even in the tech world. There's a huge revenue pressure for Elon Musk. Hence, he's been experimenting a lot with the algorithm and with verification services. The copycat move that, that we need to know all about, and which is something that Zuckerberg's done all along, was verification that started automatically on Instagram, paid verification. But what I really want to understand over here is if if Zuckerberg really does hold true to all his claims. Mm. The first one being that this is going to be the future of social media. He's going to take threads, he claims, into Activity okay. Pub. What is Activity Pub? It's a decentralized mm. social media protocol that also powers uh, stuff like Mastodon out there. Now, that's not ready at launch. But mm. when this happens, Shiv, imagine as a content creator, do you want to have all your, well, uh, you know, all your treasures and your and your revenues at the behest of a big tech company, or yeah, do you want yeah. to be empowered as a user, as a content creator? If that's yeah. the future, the YouTubes, the the you know, the Instagrams and the Twitters all need need to stand up and perhaps take notice if that's what he's going to do. That said, I completely agree with you. We're talking about uh, all the pressures on Elon Musk making right. him do these things very quickly. Mark Zuckerberg needed to pull a rabbit out of his hat out here. The yeah. meta dream never worked. It was a pipe dream. It hasn't worked yet. In terms of verification, he's been getting desperate on Instagram. Instagram's got its own issues of bots, which Elon Musk perhaps should come in and, and comment on. But now with threads, this is, uh, well, a make or break moment for Mark Zuckerberg. Well, Ayush and Manas, I appreciate you guys joining me on it. Uh, see you on threads, perhaps. I mean, the graveyard of dead social media platforms over the last decade uh, is, a, is a very, very populated one. We've seen so many. Google has failed. Facebook has had platforms that have tanked. Microsoft tried its hand as well. Uh, and uh, it's incredible. There are so many, including some of the ones that uh, both uh, Ayush and Manas just named. Well, Meta now has threads and it has launched to enormous reception. An app which is a direct rival to Twitter, ramping up this already bustling rivalry between Mark Zuckerberg and Elon Musk. Two big billionaires. On threads, people can post text and links, reply, repost messages from others, basically very much like what you do on Twitter if you are on Twitter. In case you haven't caught up with this biggest new app, Here's everything you need to know about it. The much-anticipated battle between tech billionaires Elon Musk and Mark Zuckerberg has started. Zuckerberg has made the first move by launching a Twitter rival app called Threads. Instagram's text-based conversation app called Threads is now available for download for both Android and Apple users globally. Threads, just like Twitter, will allow users to post threads on the app and reply to others, all of which will be visible on your timeline. Threads also allows text up to 500 characters, links, pictures and videos up to 5 minutes in length. Meta has made it easy for Instagram users to join the new app by linking the two and allowing them to just port over. They do not have to change their handles and will be able to follow the same people as they do on Instagram. After just a couple of hours of the official rollout, Mark Zuckerberg announced on the app that the Threads app has passed 2 million sign-ups in its first two hours live in the App Store. After the launch of Threads, Twitter is now surrounded by several rivals, including Jack Dorsey's Blue Sky and Mastodon. This battle is not just about platforms. For many, it's now become a battle of ideologies and money. Just recently, Twitter announced a rate limit restricting how many tweets users can see per day, which has upset many. Such tweaks can push users away from Twitter, making it easy for Zuckerberg's threads to bring more subscribers on board. Although the rumored physical cage fight between Musk and Zuckerberg is still uncertain, 
the virtual battle has clearly begun. Bureau Report, India Today. And an Indian Air Force contingent has just departed from India and headed to France to be part of the prestigious Bastille Day celebrations. Indian Air Force Rafale fighters will be flying over Paris as part of a grand aviation display for France's National Day. Uh, the Indian Air Force has just released that wonderful patch as well uh, for uh, to commemorate India's participation. And this picture you see here of the large Indian contingent, men, women, maintenance engineers, pilots, transport aircraft like the C-17 and of course Rafale fighters will be on their way as we speak towards Paris for the Bastille Day celebrations on the 14th of July. Remember, Prime Minister Modi will be one of the guests of honours this year at the Bastille Day celebrations by Paris. Let's go by, by France, I beg your pardon. Let's go straight across to India today's Gaurav Savant. Gaurav, very, very proud pictures of that Indian Air Force contingent. They're on their way to Paris now, Gaurav. It indeed is uh, the special badge, uh, the patch uh, for Indian Air Force uh, pilots uh, and air crew and air warriors is amazing. Shiv India, uh, Prime Minister Narendra Modi is the guest of honour at the Bastille Day. But as you well know, Indian Air Force and France, they've had a very long, a very warm uh, association uh, predating, uh, you know, India's independence. India has flown uh, French aircraft, uh, including fighters, from the beginning for Balakot airstrikes, the Mirages were used, the Rafals remain uh, the mainstay of uh, Indian Air Power as of now. So uh, what we know is that there are four Rafals, two C-17 Globemasters that will take 72 air warriors uh, to France for the Bastille Day, point one, point two. An Alouette pilot uh, uh, squadron leader, Murthy, uh, she, uh, uh, you know, uh, is... Uh, going to be leading the marching contingent and she is uh, a cheetah pilot. Uh, again, uh, yeah. Alouette's mainstay of Indian Air Force and Army in Siachen Glacier and in high altitude for decades. The war horse, in fact, they've been flown much above their ceiling uh, in saving lives or servicing uh, troops and their requirements at the Siachen Glacier and the Northeast. So it also shows the close association between India and France as far as aviation is concerned. So very, very significant. The marching contingent, the fly pass and this badge that you see there, Shiv. The patch and, that you see. And the, the marching contingent will be led by uh, a young woman officer, squadron leader Sindhu of the Indian Air Force. Uh, we congratulate her. She's on your screen in this picture you see of uh, squadron leader Sindhu along with other officers posing in front of an Indian Air Force C-17 aircraft which is there for support operations and four Indian Air Force Rafale fighters will be flying over the beautiful city of Paris for that Bastille Day fly past. Uh, uh, you know, it, it's a big honor as well, Gaurav, uh, marking the big relationship between India and France. Rafale fighters are of course from France. They've been supplied to India. Uh, so overall, this is going to be a very prestigious event. Woman officer leading the marching, marching contingent, not for the first time, very, very common nowadays. Uh, you know, but India making it a point to send a woman officer to lead that contingent also as a message about how women officers uh, and their role in the Indian military is increasing month on month. It indeed is. They've marched past uh, the saluting guys at, at uh, uh, Kartavya Path now. Uh, they've led, uh, uh, you know, combat operations. They've, they're a very integral part of operations. They're commanding battalions. They're playing a very significant role. In fact, the lady officer who's uh, marching uh, in this, uh, leading the Air Force contingent, is a helicopter pilot. And all her career, she's flown helicopters. The French Alouettes, the Chetaks, as we yeah. call them, uh, in Indian Air Force, in Indian parlance. So it, it's not symbolic, it's significant and it's substantive. That's the message that India is also sending where Prime Minister Narendra Modi is the guest of honor at the Bastille Day Parade, Shiv. Very, very impressive and very, very proud for all of the uh, members of that amazing contingent. 68 people in all headed towards France as we speak. They'll be landing there. 14th is the Bastille Day Parade. Obviously, you'll see all of that live right here on India Today. Gaurav, thank you very much for that.
Well, happy landings to the Indian Air Force team. We'll be tracking them and bringing you updates once they arrive in Paris in a few hours from now. That's it on Five Live. Thanks so much for watching.